Good morning everybody, Victor here. We are about 40 miles offshore, off the coast of Mexico right now. We came out of Puerto Vallarta, the Bay of Puerto Vallarta this morning with my good friend Jamie of High Tides Fishing. We woke up super early, got bait from the local bait guy, got a bunch of goggleyes, which is really crazy because in Mexico, these bait fish are only about a dollar a piece. Back home, they're almost $10 a piece sometimes. It's a little bit windy and bumpy out, but there's this huge rock behind me known as La Corvadena. It's one of Jamie's favorite spots to fish. And there's a lot of big pelagic fish here. I'm talking about huge elephant tuna, sailfish, marlin, and a lot of big dorado or mahi-mahi this time of year. So I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of what we're gonna do. Jamie's in the back getting some stuff ready. Let's go meet him back here, introduce you to Jamie. We got my lovely, fiance and very soon wife to be, Brookie. I'll tell you what, I don't think I've ever been seasick in my entire life, but today I am not feeling so good. <laughs> Trying to look out into the horizon and think good thoughts. <laughs> yeah, so wish our girl Brooke luck because there's no worse feeling than being seasick on a boat, but it's, it's rough out here. But that's not gonna stop us from having a good day and making a great video for you guys. This is my good friend, Jamie, High Tides. How's it going? Good morning. Very good. We're ready, finally. We're going fishing. I'm happy. There's a bunch of birds. Look at that in front. We're gonna put some rapala. Oh, we're gonna troll first? We're gonna try to catch bonitos. Oh. So we're gonna put our very easy setup, rapalas with two squid behind it. We're gonna put two, three rods and try to catch the bait that's here normally, which is bonitos. Yes. These right here are goggle eye. These are really gonna be good if we see a sailfish, we could pitch one to them, or if we see a dorado or something. But we're gonna slow troll today, pretty much all day, a combination of these goggle eye right here. And then Jamie just showed you guys those rapalas. We're in the middle of nowhere and there's that big rock, right? So all the big pelagic fish are here to feed on the bait. The bait congregates around the rock because it's the only refuge they have in you know this giant Pacific Ocean. So we're gonna just troll through the birds. You can see the bonitos coming out of the water, skipping on top. So what he does is, this Rapala's got a big lip on it and it'll actually dive down. So we're not really looking to catch the bait on the lure itself, but he's got a little squid skirt imitation on the back of the lure. A bonita might think it's a little bait fish or a little squid and he's gonna chomp down on that. So we got our little squid skirt, gonna trail behind our Rapala. We'll let it back like 20 feet, 30 feet. All right, so I'm getting the second Rapala out. We're gonna keep one far and one short and just trying to keep making passes through these birds because the birds are on top of the Bonito. Oh, we got one on Jamie, on the short rod. Take care of it, take care of it. Ah, we got him in the boat. That is what we're after, but we're gonna put him in the tuna tube real quick. But you wanna calm him down. So when you put, a bait fish normally in the live well they swim in circles. Tunas and little bonitos, they don't do that. They freak out. You pretty much put them upside down and there's water just constantly flowing through his gills in that tube. They're really fragile baits. You want to get them in that tuna tube as soon as possible. We're going to keep making a couple passes like right here. Look, we got one on right here. We're going to load up because Jamie wants to put out four of these baits at once. Fun thing about this is you're big fish fishing, man. Little fish are not going to eat these things. We're talking about dolphin over 20, 30 pounds, sailfish, marlin, 60, 80 plus pound yellowfin tuna, all big, exciting stuff. There's our second bonito. Oh, this is a petite, as Adam Malusi would say. Look at that. Check this out. When what? that first bonito came in, he spit out three squids. He must have just ate this thing. It looks perfect. That thing, Nothing. his eyeball is perfect, for real. So it goes to show you what they're feeding on. We're imitating it perfectly. Look, I'm on. We're bridling our baits. When you are fishing a big bait like this, you're looking for fish that are gonna swallow this hole, right? So what a bridle does is we're gonna be slow trolling these baits. It gives that bait a lot of range of motion to swim and there's nothing piercing its meat. So there's no big hook in its skull or its eyeball or whatever. It's just a little piece of string so he's able to swim a lot more freely. And also the circle hook is maximally exposed 
So if something like a sailfish eats it, it's going to swallow it and the circle hook is going to work its best way possible. I don't really care, like you were saying, if it's very tight to the mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't care. For me, that works. See? Perfect, yeah. I'm just going to be dragging them all around La Corvatenia, seeing where there's action. Maybe we'll see a marlin jump and we'll work that area. When the action is good, it's going to be real good. But the rest of the time, it's pretty slow. But the potential is really high to catch something amazing. All right, guys, we might have just had our first hit. Oh, yeah, this guy got crushed. Look at that. That's not what he looked like when we sent him out there. You see all these marks right here. It's kind of hard to tell. Jamie probably has a better idea, but... I think it's a mahi-mahi. Mahi? mahi. mahi? Just probably was just not big enough to eat it completely. Saw that? Oh, right there. Something on top. Yeah. I see big green or blue. Something. I ate the guard. Yeah? Yeah. 100%. Whatever was eating the bonito was not big enough to eat the bonito. So he ate the gog. Oh, it's a sail, it's a sail, Jamie. You put a goggle eye out there and do a bait switch. Sailfish? Yeah, it's a <laughs> sail. <laughs> yeah, Victor. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's the word. See him jumping back there? That was interesting. Uh -huh. no, sailfish could not eat that entire bonito. And the goggle eye was giant also, but he preferred that. And we have it on the circle hook. Yeah, so he's gonna be hooked good. Pretty crazy, a sailfish has a huge mouth, but he had a really tough time eating that, uh, both of our bonitos, and then he finally ate the goggle eye that Jamie put back there. I don't think he knows he's hooked, because these Pacific sails are way bigger than the ones that we have back home, our Atlantic sails. Oh my gosh, the hook pulled, Jamie. What? It is? Yes. When do you ever pull a hook on a sailfish? Man, we're having some tough luck today, guys. That fish just wasn't meant for us. All right, we got a big bonita on right now. It's nice to have one big bait out there with the smaller bonitas. Two big, oh, two big ones. Two big, no? Don't put them on the floor, hug it. Like hug your it, baby. Huh? Like if it was your baby. We're gonna put this in the tube? Oh my friend. But wow. now we hurry up and put the little one in the water. Holy moly. So that's the size of the real bait right there. Grab the... Hi! <laughs> Can you tell he's excited? Excited or crazy? Big bait, my friend. With these two big bonitas out, we are officially... Marlin fishing. And there you go again. Uh, uh, again. Uh, 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 uh. What was it? Oh, he's right there. Nice mahi on. This one's all lit up, real blue. That woke us up, huh, Dennis? So between all the big baits that we got, Jamie also put out a goggle eye for something like this exactly. Good mahi for the dinner table. Oh, oh. They're such cool fish. Beautiful, I love their blue pectin. Nice job, Jamie. Jamie says that almost all the dolphin they always catch are over 10 pounds, which is, that's like a nice size fish down by us in Florida. Circle hook worked that time. Mm -hmm. We lost our first sailfish, but check it out. Gorgeous mahi mahi or dorado, whatever you want to call it. Or dolphin fish if you're from Florida like us. Stunning fish. And it's crazy because these dolphin are the exact same thing that the marlin would eat alongside the bonita. Thank you to Blue Nile for sponsoring today's video. I'm getting married soon, and it seems like just yesterday I was going through the process of looking for an engagement ring. I remember trying to get everything perfect, the location, the time, what I would say, making sure I don't pass out, and the most daunting task of all, 
finding the perfect ring. As you can imagine, I was a nervous wreck, and I wish I had heard about Blue Nile back then because it would have made ring shopping so much easier. Blue Nile can help you find the perfect gift with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. In fact, Blue Nile is the original online jeweler since 1999. If you're anything like me, you'll love the ease and convenience of online shopping. Blue Nile offers 24 seven expert advice, 30 day returns, guaranteed service, and repairs for life. I also love that they offer stress-free shipping. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging. That won't give away what's inside, giving you peace of mind. So whether you're looking for earrings, necklaces, diamonds, or rings, Blue Nile makes it so easy to find the perfect gift. The holidays are right around the corner and Blue Nile is hooking you guys up with $50 off, $500 or more. Use my code Landshark at BlueNile.com. I will also have it linked in the description box below. Big thank you to Blue Nile for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to fishing. I'm not gonna lie, this is my first fish of the day and my arms are still sore from surfing. <laughs> I'm okay. Look at that. Good Gorgeous. job, Rickenstein. Look at those colors. Beautiful. Do you ever get tired of seeing those colors? No, look at the Never. lips. That beautiful blue on the lips. Never get tired of catching a mahi. Stunning. Oh, look, he's turning like crazy. turquoise blue right now. It's always crazy when you get these fish in the boat and they change colors multiple times. They just get hit with that gaff and they'll just change their colors, but. It looks like someone took spray paint and just like shot it on them like that, doesn't it? Hey, ship, we're getting bit, we're getting bit. Mahi. Got him. There you go, patience. Well, we had some patience there and just left the gog out there, even though this dolphin hit it twice, went to another bait, came back to it, and then finally ate it. And here we go. Hooked up, pretty sure it's the exact same dolphin. But sometimes you just need a little patience. Victor just finished playing that last dolphin, and here we are, catching another one. Watch this. That's a nice fish. Yeah, no, it's great. But you know what? We got a lot of fish for the dinner table, so Rikasito, your mahi is going back in the water. Let him go. Yeah. I released that fish so that you guys could catch him when you book your trip with Jaden, and you're gonna have the time of your life. Eso sí. Oh, sa oh my God! Oh. Sailfish, sailfish, right there, right there, 20 feet behind the boat. All right, guys, just fed a sailfish a, a goggle. On the drink. Nice. <laughs> nice. Come on, baby. Stay glued. We're not losing you this time. That was so cool. I thought it was a marlin. I just saw this huge silhouette of a pelagic fish come right through the spread. We had a goggle eye real short. He just slurped it and he's running, man. Look at him. He's dumping line. He's so Look at him. Look at him. He's big. big yeah, one. he's big. You know, as a fisherman, everywhere you go, just the possibility of different fish and being in a new environment is so exciting. The, the fact that, you know, every time I fish with Jamie, it's always something new. Brookie caught her biggest ever rooster fish and the biggest rooster fish I've ever seen in person, 70 pounds with Jamie when we fished in shore. I caught one of my biggest ever Kubera snapper, my first big one with him ever, and that was over here in Mexico doing the exact same thing, slow trolling live bonitas. We caught mahi with him, now a sailfish. We've had marlin strikes before. In this area of the world just feels like big fish. This is a little baby hook too, Jamie. It's a small hook. Yeah. But you got this. With the best, with high tides. The best charter operation out of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Oh, he's gonna jump. He's go picking up speed right there. Oh my gosh, guys, look at him jumping. There's nothing 
more exciting than seeing a big sailfish or a dolphin fly out of the water. Oh my gosh, look, 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 he's going crazy. Beautiful animal, look at that thing. So Dennis is filming and getting those jumps, but it's crazy because I could feel in the line and I'm like, Dennis, get ready, he's gonna jump. They just do something different. The line just feels very different when they're gonna jump. We've been trolling here. I feel confident. I've been telling these guys I feel happy. We haven't been able to fish these days, but now we're here. I saw bonitos all over. I saw birds. We caught nice baits. I'm excited and hopefully we can land that big old Pacific sail. These fish are super unpredictable. They'll just go slack on you. They'll dive down and then they'll just shoot up to the surface, try to shake that hook out. As you can imagine, he's freaking out. He's never felt this in his life. So his number one instinct is to A, throw up his stomach, which they do. Just like when you're sick, you know, you throw up, you don't feel good, something's going on. They do the exact same thing and they just go and shake because they probably feel that pressure in their mouth and they have no idea what's going on. Sailfish, catch, clean, cook, here we go. Nice job, Jamie. Put the you need help? In gear. Boating gear? A little, a little faster, just a little faster. Why it calms him down? It yeah! <laughs> Look at that sucker! That's a giant sailfish! Wow. That's the best, biggest Pacific sail I've ever seen, Jamie. <laughs> there we go. Come here, mamacita. All right, guys, we got it done. Captain Jamie of High Tides put us on the Pacific sail. Now, I'm very excited to eat this thing. And first thing I'm going to do is not only thank Captain Jamie, but thank the sailfish for giving up its life for us. And we're going to be able to feed our friends and family. It's actually pretty traditional. It's not uncommon to harvest sailfish in the Pacific, especially in Mexico. Jamie says they eat them all the time. They smoke them. You could eat them as sushi, a lot of different recipes. And these guys are far from being scarce over here. There's so many of these things and I'm very excited to try it. You know, we don't get to eat a lot of billfish back home. I don't know. I'm just a happy man. What do you think, Jamie? I'm a happy man also. As I told earlier, this week was a little hard on us, so that fish means a lot for me, definitely. Yeah. And we had a rough week. There was a hurricane that hit Puerto Vallarta about a week ago. You know, it's been really rough seas, so we finally got a nice calm day to go out. A little calmer day to go out, and two sailfish so far, and the day is still very young. Whoa. He's back, he's back, Jamie. Come on, let's go! Oh, he's on now! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. What is it? I don't know. It had oh, a big. Eat eater, Victor! It might. It's going down, no? Oh, oh. it's a sailfish, right? Big sailfish. Big sailfish. Right, the bonito. He's, he's going away, crazy. Big angry sailfish, charging the boat. So the first time that he came and crushed the bonita, I was feeding him, feeding him, feeding him. Dropped it back. He dropped it. Then he came back for it, fed him a little bit more, let it really, let him really swallow it, and he got it this time. Man, the sailfish are out today. This is our third sailfish bite so far. So Jamie's constantly driving the boat towards him, so we can kind of catch up, because if you fight a sailfish from a standstill boat, like this one right here, we want to release, so we don't want to fight them too long. It's not good for the fish. So we kind of try to go towards them so we can get that hook out as fast as possible. What a cool fish, man. You never get tired of catching them. Jamie's going to let this one go. He's just grabbing it by the bill. Boat's in gear. You need help? Oh, it's okay. You want to do it? No, you got it. And seeing that sail come up, just protrude out of the water, they'll actually use that to corral bait and to scare them and to get them into a bait ball how they want.
Nice job, guys. Good job, Jamie. Two sailfish, two dream fish, all in one day. And a mahi, and lots of exciting action. You can't beat it. Seeing as we're on a boat, this would require a giant cooler. So I'm gonna fillet this thing right now. I filleted one other sailfish in my life, an Atlantic sailfish in Florida. Never a Pacific sailfish and never on a moving boat. But I don't think it'll be too hard. Head meet up there. I'm gonna go around his pectoral fin. Kind of just ride the backbone. Right here alongside his sail. Just kind of making the initial outline. The Atlantic sailfish that I filleted was very red. This is much more of a yellowish white color than the Atlantic sailfish. Very bloody fish, like any pelagic fish, but we're gonna rinse the fillets off in the water. And so right now I'm kind of on top of his backbone, right on the center of it. I'm kind of tilting my knife down on the other side of his backbone. Gives you a nice little natural handle to hold on to. This is all like a huge air sack. That might be one of the longest fillets I've ever held. That thing's gotta be probably close to 60 inches long of just pure, delicious, sailfish meat look at it i'm gonna cut this right down the middle because it's gonna be way too long to just skin as one big piece the meat feels real nice like a good thick piece of fish that you'd want to throw on a grill or something like look at that it's like a good steak i mean it is a pretty bloody piece of meat but we're gonna rinse it off real quick and bricky has got a ziploc bag ready for us Now I just got to repeat the process. It's going to take a while. It's a really big animal. We're going surfing. All right, guys, we are headed to a little beach called La Lancha. Quite the hike to get out here, but everybody says the waves are like perfect. Two to four footers, real clean break. You could ride them for like a minute. You guys don't understand how excited I am. When I first started fishing, I was obsessed. And don't get me wrong, after doing it for the last, my whole life, I love to fish. But picking up a new hobby or sport that's like really challenging, especially physically challenging, is not only humbling, but it just like reinvigorates, I don't know, a fire in you that you didn't know you have. You have to like relearn all the basics. It's like going through knowing what type of line and hook and everything else to choose and what beach is good for what. It's, it's very humbling, but very rewarding. And I've dreamed of coming here and surfing for a long time because back on the east coast of Florida we're not really known to have the best waves. Over here you have these long, long periods and sets and they pretty much have a wave year round. So I'm very excited to see what this beach is all about. I'd say these are probably the cleanest waves that Brooke and I have ever surfed. Complete noob out there, as you guys saw in the drone, all those wipeouts, but it's so much fun. I highly suggest if there's something you've wanted to try in your life and you've been putting off surfing, no one taught. I just went out and got a Costco board and just sent it. And here I am, probably 15 surf trips in, slowly getting better and better and just absolutely loving it. Fell in love with it. 
a good challenging sport and you know if there's something you wanted to try try it man you're not gonna regret it this is what you do after you surf right here you hit up the local taco stand you guys saw that meat on that stick the smell that's coming out of here i know dennis is excited aren't you? traditionally in mexico most tacos come with cilantro and onion but they always give you radish and i think it's a nice palate cleanse it's crunchy and when you add all those really rich flavors this really cleanses your palate same thing with the lime juice this is the most legit taco place i've ever been to we got pineapple avocado crema habanero salsa these onions don't they look like regular onions they're covered in habanero and they got a bite they're hot we got chorizo tacos mixed quesadilla tacos al pastor normally when you see us in mexico fishing with jamie we go back to his place which is the hacienda so he does these all-inclusive fishing packages where you can fish with him but you can actually also stay at, it's kind of like a, an all-inclusive resort where they cook your meals for you in a hotel. The day we got here, a hurricane hit. Jamie let us know we wanted to come anyway because we had this trip planned for a long time and we really wanted to go surfing and hang out with him. So it was our fault, but we booked the trip literally the day a hurricane hit. So the Ocean doesn't have power right now. Lo and behold, luckily Jamie's friend lives over here in, where are we, nu Nuevo? Nuevo Vallarta. Nuevo Vallarta. So we're cooking in his kitchen. Here's the scoop on the sailfish. This is what it looks like. Very firm. So I'm gonna treat this like I would something like an amberjack. This is not a fish you wanna cook a really thick piece of, because I know if I cook this right here, hole in the grill, it would be really chewy, even if you cooked it to perfection. So what we're gonna do is, I made them into little mini baby steaks. Um, this is not gonna be that chewy, because it's a smaller, more manageable piece to bite. And I'm gonna just cover them in teriyaki sauce. But another thing I discovered with this fish, this sailfish was covered in what's called sinew. So on the, like on a tuna as well, tuna have a lot of sinew. It's basically like the connective tissue. It was on the bottom of the filet. So this actually came off of the bottom portion of this sailfish and this stuff is like an accordion i mean it's it's like the skin of a lobster you don't want to eat it so i just went ahead and shave that off with the knife cut it away and basically all i'm doing is about this big size steaks cutting it alongside um rather than you know this would be like your traditional piece of fish you'd get served in a restaurant but instead is where your knowledge in the kitchen really has to come into play. I can feel this is gonna be a firm fish and I don't want it to turn into leather on me on the grill. Doesn't mean it's bad, it just means you gotta really know how to treat every fish for every different situation. You know, whenever we come here, we really look forward to going to the Hacienda because it is beautiful. It's like nestled up in the mountains and in this forest, there's a waterfall by it. Karen is an amazing chef, she usually cooks us meals. Tonight you guys get Chef Vic in Mexico. To go alongside our sailfish steaks, we're gonna do something like a sailfish carpaccio. I got some capers, Parmesan cheese, olive oil. I try to slice those relatively thin. Also a great fish to do sashimi with because of the fact that it is so firm. Garlic salt, we're gonna go in with some garlic salt. Jamie is a very special person. He's got such a just positive and just vibrant outlook on life. Everywhere we go, we're like, Jamie, how long does it take to get there? He goes, well, it depends on your point of view. And we're like, what do you mean? He goes, you got somewhere to be because the only place I got to go is surfing today. And I'm like, you know what? That's the mentality I need in my life. It's all in your head. You don't need everything to be easy and fast. Now we're gonna go in with teriyaki and we're fighting the sun. We got a gorgeous sunset that we're gonna grill on, which you guys are gonna see in a second. But, all right, just massage this all in and flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. Mexican sunset in the background, on the beach, Mountains in the background. I mean, I can't think of a prettier view to grill a sailfish on. So the grill is really hot, about 500 degrees, perfect searing temperature. I'm gonna lower it a little bit though. 
And let's just start putting these on. These should get super nice and uh, glazed up. The sugars in that teriyaki will caramelize and it should be a really good, good dinner. All right, let's flip them. I can tell that they are already getting a little on the tougher side. This is not a fish that cooks very long. Look at that triple flipper, Dennis. They look good. They look like little they look like little pieces of pork or, or chicken on the grill, don't they? Basically just cooked it on one side because these are real thin pieces, but like I said, I don't want someone to have a really chewy piece because I've dealt with sailfish before and I don't think that Pacific sailfish is gonna be much different than Atlantic sailfish. For the fact that we came here during a hurricane, it's not a bad situation right here. Now what we're gonna do is I have our very thinly sliced sailfish and we're gonna just go right on top of our, I don't know if you wanna call it a carpaccio. I think carpaccio has to be sliced really thin, technically. Some red peppers, drizzle some olive oil on top, some garlic salt, just a little bit. I'm gonna do some lemon juice for some acidity. and then some Parmesan right on top. Sailfish crudo. And now let's go check out what we made outside. I'm telling you guys, it is meaty. You know when you uh, normally cut into a fish, you get that like real delicate flake? This is not like that. This is like you're eating a pork chop. But flavor-wise, it's good. I like it. A little firm, as you're saying, mm -hmm. but the, the taste, the way you did it also, I like it. Making them into these small steaks, I'm telling you, is the move. If you got a really tough cut of anything, beef, chicken, Slice it thin and it makes it that much better when you're dealing with a tough cut of meat. Firm fish. It's just more of a firm fish, but it's really delicious. The teriyaki is great. I haven't tried it raw yet, but I think it's great. I prefer it raw. Really? Oh yeah, I prefer it raw for sure. It makes great sashimi. Mmm. Very good sashimi. Very good. It's got a good oiliness to it. That's why a lot of people like to smoke it. It's good raw. I like it as sashimi. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, if you want a trip like this, check out the man. This is Jamie right here, owner of High Tides Fishing. I'm going to have all this stuff to the Hacienda, like I told you guys about, linked below, as well as his charter business. He's my very good amigo. And he said next year he's coming to fish the mall run with us, so I'm going to hold him to it. Thank you guys again for coming. It's always a pleasure spending some time with you fishing. I hope you're coming back soon or if not I'm going to Florida anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you guys.